In the first video of this series, we show how we invoked a, this command. There was a PowerShell, it was in a Word document, and also we did it manually. Whether instead of uh, executing it just like that, we actually obfuscated the command by using the option encode, and here is uh, with escape characters to obfuscate it even more. But this thing in here is the encode base 64 version of the one on top and these these commands are typically very very long as you can see here right how do you do that well encode base 64 is the the most basic type of encryption and just to give you an idea if we want to execute this this command and by the way all these commands are in a file called instructor2.txt that is in my public box folder right so if I want to execute this command, which basically allows me to log in into other machines for moving laterally, but I want to obfuscate it, I add these extra lines of code, and as you can see, I'm tell telling PowerShell to encode it base64. Just to give you an idea, let me actually grab that. Go here and open a PowerShell. And if you just paste that command in here and hit enter you get that blob and that blob is the encoded version of that command and that is you know, again a very basic but still widely used technique that the bad guys uh, use but we're going to be showing today a more more sophisticated we're going to start with one and then in the next video we show another ones that are far more uh, <laughs> difficult to understand and and in encode might be there might be a, a good business reason for using encode on, on PowerShell. I don't see many, but there might be one. The problem is that if you cannot decode what's going on, you don't know whether it's legit or not, whether to trigger an alarm or an offense or not. So uh, the command that we're going to be working with is actually this one. And this is the, the same that we've been using to initiate the attack to download the mylove.exe, start it as a process and all that. But we are going to encode that base64. And the best, the first thing that we need to do to do so is actually download a, an encoded library. I'm going to show you all the steps so you can uh, follow this and understand this better and see how the bad guys do these things. If we paste that in here, we just download that library file. I should be on my desktop by now and here it is and I can actually extract all and we have it here in this directory now what we need to do is first we need to start a PowerShell but with admin rights so we do PowerShell again and we right click and do oh, run as administrator and we see what we show before the user access control we show in the previous video how we bypass that in win 7 and uh, so we are here now we need to move into the directory where we extracted those files and that is uh, users IA user which is the Windows evaluation and that's on the desktop Oops and it's called in invoke something so i'm gonna put in yeah and it's actually in another directory so we are where we want it to be and i'm putting all the instructions in here you the first thing that you need to do is set in powershell this option which allows you to perform those commands so we paste that in here let me see if i grab that well i did not so we issue that command and we specify a for all okay next we need to invoke this command to import that module and we hit enter and we need to specify run once for all the libraries that it will present so we do that until we get the prompt back a couple of times actually okay there we are 
now we need to invoke the obfuscation and that calls the actual program now this is when the phone begins as you see there are multiple options that are available in here we're going to use encoding and now we're going to grab this set a script block and then as you see is the actual text that we want to encode with with special characters and you'll see us uh, doing that in a second so first you, you grab this and set uh, that the script block and that's the that's why you if you remember when we set this up uh, we specify a script option login option in PowerShell in order to be able to detect these type of things so I run the command and it runs successfully and looks like I now I need to select still encoding I thought I have I mean I don't know why it's asking me to do encoding again but uh, let's actually select that option okay and now we need to select the one that we're going to be using as you can see <laughs> this is crazy with, with all the things you can do binaries you can do bx or uh, x axis we're going to do special characters right so we're going to select option number seven and here we have it that blob in the air that's the encoded with special characters you see they are all special characters curly braces and brackets and commas and columns and all that so all you need to do is type copy to have that put in the clipboard and actually Curera detected when I was actually doing that right but uh, that's not the focus of what we want to do let's actually clear that uh, offense to make sure that we are with a clean slate here and let's go back to our machine so we have the content of that encoding here is in my clipboard as you can see I can now I don't I no longer need this so I'm going to execute that remember that that is that command that I encoded I transformed this clear text of download file my love.exe other thing into that blob of stuff in order to disguise my step I have my uh, Kali system here uh, you see me doing this in the previous video invoking the resource file and the uh, jose.rc uh, so now I, all I need to do is open even a regular PowerShell will do it doesn't have to be I can even do it from inside PowerShell which is the option that we have now because we upgraded to PowerShell version 5 otherwise not even any any from the log anything from the log will be here or we can actually run a command window and put PowerShell in there and, and execute that but if I were to paste the content of that uh, clipboard in here and hit enter let me actually make this narrower so we can see what's happening on the Kali side if I hit enter here I should be able to start a session when I hit enter notice that I got a session here and I can do the things as I did in the previous video you know uh, going to that session with the sessions interactive one and do a as for a shell and escalate privileges and do all the things you know as, as we were doing before right if we go into the desktop actually there's no I cannot tap in here because I'm in Kali so if I go into the desktop and I do dear we see the files that we were working with before now this was obfuscated so if any log was sent it is all gravel but Curita has the capability of detecting many forms of obfuscation let's actually go to the Curita console and see let's refresh the screen and see what is it that we can see uh-huh so we got 27 events let's actually open this 
let's display the rules that fire on this and we see you know process created uh, on a thread into a system process which is strange loaded on sign executable DLL the my love.exe the my the my love.exe is not sign uh, create an executable file long PowerShell command which is when we did the encoding that thing becomes very very big malicious PowerShell command name detected metapreter remember I told you in, the, in, in one of the videos in the positioning video I said you know if you use metapreter it's easy for that to be detected and as you can see there are rules uh, in this package that uh, even detect that let's actually see the events the 27 events and see what curator was able to detect let me actually group these by event name so I have them here let's actually look at these uh, process create and we should see the my love.exe in here when we look at it as you see Curera was able to parse correctly what I did in there in spite of the obfuscation right this obfuscation is a little bit more complicated than the than the one that we saw first with encode base 64 right so no problem for curator curator does the decoding and then does the parsing and all the things are actually extracted and we know everything that happened in spite of the obfuscation